Hello children. We are going to begin with unit 1 of our Sunday school textbook which is related to Bible stories. And today's chapter is related to Moses. Okay? The chapter is titled Moses and the Palace of Egypt. I am Mina Matthew and I am going to be taking your class for today. Let us now learn who was Moses. I am sure the name of Moses is heard by most of you. But let us recollect who was Moses. Moses was the son of Amram, who was a member of the priestly tribe of Levi of Israel. Now children, uh, you need to remember that Israel was divided into 12 tribes and the tribe of Levi is, was related to the conducting of all the priestly activities. So Moses' father was a member of this tribe. His mother was Joshebed. He had a brother named Aaron and a sister named Miriam. Moses was the younger son of his parents and he was unusually handsome, okay? Meaning he was unusually good looking. Now, we may wonder why did God choose Moses? You know children, when we are born, God has already destined what we are going to do with our lives. We are not aware but whatever we do is because God wishes us to do so. He has chosen us for various things and Moses himself was destined for many things right from the time of his birth. Moses was destined to deliver the people of God. The people of God meaning the Israelites from Egypt. The Israelites were being treated as slaves in Egypt. You know who are slaves? They are people like, uh, you know, they are worse than our servants. Our servants still have some rights, but a slave has no right. So, the Israelites were being treated as slaves in Egypt. So, God chose Moses to bring the Israelites, who were also known as Hebrews, out of Egypt and for this purpose God gave Moses the opportunity to grow up like a prince in the palace of Egypt. We will wonder Moses who was the son of a slave how did he reach the palace of Egypt? Yes now let us see what happened. The Israelites were being treated as slaves in Egypt and King Pharaoh of Egypt was jealous of their growth in number. He was not liking that the Israelites were growing in number. So he ordered the murder of all male children of the Israelites. For the parents of Moses desired to save the life of their child. They hid the child from others for three months. When the child was very, very small, the voice of the child could easily be muffled. They, would, they could keep the child in hiding. So for three months, they hid the child from others. But as he grew older, they found it difficult to hide the child because they feared someone would hear the cries of the child. So as the child started growing, they found it all the more difficult to hide the child because children start crying and you could easily make out the cries of a child. So uh, they found it difficult and they were frightened that someone would hear the cries of the child. So they made a small basket from papyrus reeds. Papyrus reeds are the kind of, uh, if you look into the picture given here, you can see that uh, long grass-like structures are growing near the water. These are called reeds. They are called papyrus reeds. So they made a small basket from papyrus reeds. They waterproofed it with tar. So waterproofed it with tar. They uh, you know coated it from outside and from inside with tar and then they put the tiny baby in it. They laid the basket among the papyrus reeds on the banks of the river Nile. The river Nile flows through Egypt. It is the longest river. So they 
put the child on the banks of the river Nile. And the spot where they put the basket was being used by the daughter of Pharaoh for taking her bath. So when the princess came down with her maids to bathe, she heard the cry of the baby and saw the little basket with the baby floating in the river among the reeds. So when the, the princess came down to have a bath, she saw this little baby. She heard the cries and saw this little baby in that basket. She was moved by the sight of the innocent and handsome child. We know that, uh, you know, uh, children are anyway, they are beautiful. Why are they beautiful? Because children are innocent looking. The princess was moved by the beauty of the child, by the innocence of the child. So she took the baby in her arms and told her maids to find a mother to nurse the child. And now we are going to see how God has his ways. So, when the princess asked for some kind of a servant to take care of the child, Miriam, who was a sister of Moses, was standing there. She was watching all this from a distance. She ran and to the princess and she suggested to the princess that they could find one of the Israelite women to take care of the baby. The princess agreed. And so Miriam got the real mother of Moses to take care of the child. See how God works. He got the mother of Moses, the real mother of Moses to come and take care of him. And the princess never realized that she was actually giving uh, or, you know, a nod or saying a yes to the child's actual mother. Thus, the child's own mother got an opportunity to nurse the child at home and she was paid for this. The, this is the interesting part. Moses' mother was herself taking care of a child and this time she could take care of a child without being afraid of the child being killed because now the child was under the protection of the princess and so no one would take away the child and thus God destined Moses to be taken care by his own mother. Okay? So this is how God works miracles in our life and so Moses, he became the son of the princess. The princess named the baby as Moses and that means drawn out of water. Okay, So the word Moses, the name Moses, it means drawn out of water because Moses was taken out from water. So the princess named him by that name. He got food, education and nurturing like a prince. So Moses, despite being in reality the son of a slave, he was nurtured like a prince. Saint Stephen the martyr in Acts 7 verse 22, he wrote that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. So as a prince, he grew up to be wise. He was very good in his, you know, tasks. So he learned and his wisdom was mighty. So he was mighty in words and deeds. But the interesting part was that Moses never forgot his own people, that is, the Israelites. Now we must remember that who was taking care? It was Moses' own mother who was taking care. So it is obvious that she had brought him up, she had told him what he actually was or who he actually was. And so he never forgot his people, that is, the Israelites. Now, Moses was moved by the difficulties faced by the Israelites and his heart bled to see them suffer. So as a prince, when he was free, 
to roam around he could see that his own people were not safe they were constantly being troubled and tortured and his heart bled meaning he was filled with sorrow to see them suffer when he came of age he refused to be called the son of the pharaoh's daughter so when he grew up he uh, was all knowledgeable and he began to understand things he refused and said that he will not be called the son of the pharaoh's daughter instead of enjoying the passing pleasures of sin he chose to bear the sufferings like his fellow hebrews now you must understand children moses had the choice of forgetting his people he had because he was uh, you know being taken care of as a prince so he had the choice of forgetting his people but he did not do so okay and he chose to bear the sufferings like his fellow hebrews and so at the age of 40 he left the palace of pharaoh to become the leader of the israelites and so moses left egypt moses who became the deliverer of the jews from egypt gained his learning common sense and leadership qualities from the royal palace yes this is a fact that we should remember because he was being nurtured like a prince so his learning his common sense and the leadership qualities came from the royal palace but there is no doubt that all this was ordained by god now how did this happen with moses it happened only because god wished it to be so so this was what was ordained by god and so moses was brought up in the palace and he was able to nurture himself like a prince moses was a true leader who guided his people in the right path which made them in turn show love and respect for him we have leaders but the true leader is the one who is able to guide his people in the right path okay only then you are a good leader and moses was one such leader he knew what he was what he had to do and in return what did he get his he got the love and the respect of his people so children in this chapter we learn that god is compassionate towards all god does not distinguish between the rich and the poor he has compassion he has mercy he has kindness towards all and when we are in trouble he comes to our rescue whenever we are in any kind of trouble we need to remember god and he will come to our rescue just like god went to the rescue of the israelites he chose a leader for them and he guided that person to become a good leader so he will come to our rescue and though we are weak god will strengthen us so that his purposes are fulfilled through us so we need to realize that whatever we may do we may be weak in various aspects but god will certainly strengthen us so that whatever he has thought about us whatever he has destined for us his purposes are fulfilled through us so children we will we should remember this and continue to believe in god in times of trouble thank you children we'll end the chapter here right now and press the bell icon never miss an update